today we're going to be talking about lighting specifically to see if you can tell the difference between a $20 pair of lights and a $260 pair of lights. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Matt from the BNB Network, and if you are interested in all things live streaming, OBS, tech tips, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss a single video. In today's video, we're going to talk about live stream lighting, and if you can really tell the difference between the cheap lighting that you could get like on Amazon or something like that versus more professional lighting specifically from Elgato. So if you watch that intro, I'm curious how many of you could actually tell the difference between the cheap lighting versus the expensive lighting. Or if you even know what lighting I'm using right now, or right now, lighting A, lighting B. So if you wanna go ahead and make your guesses, you can do so in the comments, I'll give you a second. Is the expensive lighting lighting A or lighting B? So I'm not gonna draw this out any longer. I'm gonna let you know which lighting is the expensive lighting, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about which type of lighting might be appropriate for your particular live streaming uh, production needs. Many of you probably guessed it, but lighting A is actually the expensive lighting. What we are using are two Elgato Key Light Air lights. <laughs> That's what they call their lights. I felt like it should have, I should have said something else. The MSRP for two Elgato Key Light Airs is $130 each, so $260. I was running with a, a neutral color temperature and only about 20% power. The second set of lights that you saw that I was alternating between during the intro and also is lighting B is just a set of like blogging or makeup lights I got on Amazon for roughly $10 a piece. Both sets of lights are linked in the description. I might have to dig a little bit for the makeup lights because it's uh, on Amazon and they've been a couple years ago and so they often change out the products and they're slightly different, slightly different prices. But uh, when I bought them, they were like, eight or nine bucks a piece. I just rounded up to 20 because it's easier for the title. Many of you, if you were watching the intro, you probably weren't fooled at all about which light was the nice, the nice set of lights. And that's understandable, especially if you have any experience, it can be really easy to quickly tell which ones are the, the good, the good lights. What I find fascinating is the value proposition of these two $10 makeup vlogging lights. And if you really get $240 more value out of an Elgato key light air. I cannot remember, I cannot remember that phrase. Because they offer so much versatility, for me it makes sense to have the more expensive lighting. What I'm seeing a lot is people that are especially uh, people that like to live stream, they feel the pressure of having this nice expensive equipment and they'll go and they'll drop 130 bucks on one key light or 260 bucks on two, or if you get the full key light or the 400 bucks for two of them, that's a lot of money that could probably be better spent on something else. So what I like to do is show people budget options that can help hold them over until uh, either their income uh, doing, whether it's live streaming or some type of uh, video production um, matches the type of equipment they're investing in. And these little vlogging lights got me through about two years before I needed to upgrade. And once I needed to upgrade, I was making enough money using the lights and using my video equipment enough to justify the upgrade. And it wasn't this huge, huge uh, sacrifice to buy the lighting. But for most people, especially if you're not making any money uh, making videos or streaming or whatever you're doing, it's not worth the investment at the beginning. Like I said, that money, that $240 difference between the two products could probably be much better spent in other ways. But this is not like some type of Elgato key light price bashing video. They offer a lot of versatility and can do a lot of things that these little vlogging lights cannot do. Here's what the vlogging light looks like. It has a little extender right here and a little spot for your, uh, your phone if you're doing some vlogging. It's great for what I'm doing right here, but there have been some issues that I've had to work around. For one, the neutral light setting that I prefer to use with these actually creates a hum in the room that you can hear. It's bizarre and sometimes can even come through my audio. It's only on the one light setting. If I use the, the very white or the very um, like yellow goldish hue, uh, it doesn't happen. Only on the neutral setting do you get that, um, that buzz. Also, the light that you saw was uh, max brightness. 
So let me switch back to it again. So the key lights are off. This is just the two vlogging lights I have on the right and the left. And this is maximum brightness. With me right here, and the camera's right in my face, and I have a, a camera with a fairly good sensor uh, for filming stuff like this. It's a Sony ZV-1. It doesn't have any problems, and you can see me pretty well. I'm pretty well lit, at least enough for you know a video like this. This is the max brightness for the Elgato Keylight Air. It's quite difficult for me to even see my computer screen because they're quite bright. And they're not even as bright as the full Elgato key lights. Now I don't even use all this brightness. Usually I'm down to about 20%, which I'm putting them back to now. But I have filmed videos where I've needed 60 or 70% of that light because of the positioning of the lights, how far back they needed to be. So for me, it's it's a no brainer. I, ha I have to have better lighting and I need it to be discreet and mobile, which is why I don't have the big, the big box lighting. You ever see those big things? I just don't have the room for all that. But if I were making YouTube videos now, I mean, I guess I am making YouTube videos, but if that's what my main goal was, I'm making YouTube videos, I'm doing some live streaming. I just want to have some lighting so that people can see my face a little bit. And I don't want to break the bank, $10, $20 for a, for a cheap light. Yeah, it's not as good. It's not as bright. It's not as versatile, but it's a lot of bang for your buck. I would encourage you if you're thinking about making videos or doing streaming to think about the value proposition of the tech you're looking at. It's really easy to FOMO in and buy this really expensive gear because this other cool streamer has it and they're cool and they have all this awesome equipment. So you want to be cool too. I think it's better if you save that capital and use it on things that will actually help improve your videos more. I guess I should probably make some kind of video about like what I would prioritize spending my money on if I was new to all this. Uh, whenever I have that done, I'll have it uh, recommended to you right here. So you can just click that video. Until then, catch you next time. There's a spider above my head right now. I have nothing to kill him with. I got him.